Hey everyone, this is Shaki from Atomos. Today I wanted to take you through a walkthrough of the Ninja phone used with the all new Fuji X106. So right over here, we've got the Ninja phone sitting on top of the X100 camera. And you can see there's an iPhone 15 Pro Max that's sitting uh, right above and it's attached with this clamp style connection and that essentially holds the Ninja phone together right and then if you are turning around on the back over here you can see the good old familiar NPF battery we've got the video output that's coming out from the ninja phone into the phone and you can see that video is actually being fed from this camera via this HDMI cable into the HDMI input of the ninja phone now you can also notice a new thing over here which is the new locking HDMI cable right so this brings an added layer of security to your connection so that this won't, you know, flimsily come off and you can hear that click. Same goes with the USB-C as well. There's that locking button over here. Here is the power button. This power button actually is also an indicator over here. This little light over here, the green light. If it turns red, it means that your battery is low and it needs a quick charge. Quickly turning this around, this setup over here, you can see over here what we've got is a very familiar user interface if you are an old Atomos user. You know, you've got your OS tools, monitoring tools that are set up right below over here. Over here on the top left is a little indicator to show you that the Ninja phone is connected. And if you tap on it, it can, it'll show you your Ninja phone is actually connected and the green shows that it's powered on. If I turn that off, right on the top over here is a quick little info bar that shows you that you've got an HDMI connection followed by your frame rates, what monitoring mode you're in, and over here it's an HDI HLG mode, which is what we highly recommend you to use. So you know you get the best of both worlds for an SDR delivery or an HDR delivery. And um, right on the top is how long you know you've got uh, time to go which is like in terms of like memory that is your memory capacity and then that's your battery and that's your time code which actually goes up when you hit this and then you can see what as I've hit record over here there's this red line that goes along the phone to also indicate you that the phone is recording I'm just gonna quickly stop that over there and I'm gonna take you through the different monitoring tools so Right up over here, we've got the focus speaking tool, which is one of my favorites, you know, when it comes down to pulling focus. So, you know, you don't do any guesswork in figuring out, like, have I got this image in focus? You can quickly just pull focus from the back to the front and you can see how the red outline gets stronger as I'm pulling it on the subject. If I hold on that icon for a little longer, I can actually change the density of the focus speaking tool. So this is all down to your personal preference. I quite like to keep it at medium so it doesn't distract me from my image that I'm monitoring at and I can also change the colors of what this focus speaking would look like. Personally, I'd like to keep it to a color that is a bit different to the background so it actually pops out. So in this instance, I'm gonna keep it at red. If I turn that off and turn this tool off, now going on to the next one, I can flip this monitor view. So if you are a content creator and you are using it in selfie mode, you know this is a bit pretty big problem because you are not getting a flipped mirrored image. In this instance, you can do that real quickly with the tap of a button. Another tool over here is the scopes. You can see when I tap that button, this is a vector scope that shows you where your color ranges are sitting. But if I was to hold that icon for a little bit longer, I can actually bring up two different scopes over here. So you've got your vector scope over here and you've got your waveform over there. I can actually hold on to that and then turn up the intensity of how that information actually lays out on the screen. And this all corresponds directly to what you're seeing on your Ninja phone. And if I was to adjust the shutter on the camera, you can see how that's getting that waveform is getting crushed. If I was to make that brighter, it goes up. And generally the rule is like, you wanna keep your waveform somewhere in the middle so that you are getting the most dynamic range. You wanna push up the highlights and you want to you know, maintain those shadows in a fairly decent place when you're shooting in HLG because you want to naturally maximize that dynamic range. So when you go into post-production, you've got that information to play with. So I'm going to turn that off. And we've got the 
the guides over here and if I was to hold that on I can actually change what different types of guides I want so you know the most familiar one you know when you come down to composition especially coming from the photography world got your rule of thirds and that's your grid over there I can also make this thinner or thicker so you can see how those lines became thick I'm gonna turn that off moving on we've got our folds color Again, one of my favorite colored tools when it comes down to exposing. You can see over here, if I was to make my image darker by increasing the shutter, you can see how it's gone all blue. And that means it's dark. And if I was to turn that off, you can see it's a fairly dark image. And if I was to go the other way and bring more light into it, you can see over here, it's really bright because it's red over here. And if I was to turn that off, you can see it's really bright. If I was to bring that back on and I, I want to normalize this level, I would adjust this accordingly so I can remove that red bit off uh, a decent middle ground for the shadow area and for the bright area. And if I was to turn that off, you can see how that's sitting. This is obviously red because that is a direct light that it's been pointed at. And you know, we've got information over there. But moving on, we've got now the aspect ratio tool so if you're shooting for social media you can now frame up in the world of the 16 by 9 and actually get all of that but you're maintaining a frame that is in one by one this gives you the flexibility to you know if you want to post this video for YouTube in 16 by 9 you've got the full image but you know if you were to crop it off you've got a one by one composition that's safe to go now you can also change this and go into a different format right say for example you want to do four by three right and there's your four by three guide and here you can see i've now enabled the safe area zone so you know if you want to put titles text that sort of information you've got those guides if i was to hold that back i can turn that off i can actually even change the opacity of how this overlay is affected so if i hit 100 and i go like hey i don't want to see what's happening on the outside and i just want to purely focus on the inside there you go and if i was to hold that back on i can even change how thin and thick the, those white outlines are so i'm going to turn that off and then I'm going to move into another tool, which is the anamorphic de-squeeze mode. So say, for example, you were using a, a mirrorless camera or a cinema camera and you wanted to use an anamorphic lens. Now, we all know that when you use an anamorphic lens on a traditional camera body and if it's got no anamorphic de-squeeze mode on, you're going to see a squished image. This tool over here essentially rectifies that and you're able to see what that image looks like when it's de-squeezed. So when you go into post-production, you have no guesswork because you've actually seen what it looks like on set. So when you go into post, that same image is seen across. And if you was to hold that tool for a bit longer, you can see I've got a two times uh, squeeze mode in for a four by three and I can just change that accordingly. Here is the Zebra tool, which I'm sure many of you all are very familiar with, um, which quickly just shows you what is, you know, at its brighter points. And, you know, you can actually set this up to a range between from a zero to a hundred. I can adjust this and you can see as I adjust this, this is affecting that image. And if I was to hold that back, generally the rule is you want to sit somewhere in the 80% mark. To 100 and you can also colorize that and you can see over here how that image is being affected accordingly and you can see also how easy it is to use this tool um, when I'm talking about the monitoring tools over here I can just quickly pinch that out and we are back in the full image so that was the zebra tool and if I was to turn that off and I'm just gonna go through this one over here which is your audio meter and you can see over here You've got your audio meters that is coming directly from your camera and you can see where it's sitting. And the beauty of this tool is that you can actually just quickly monitor it. And if you're happy with the levels, you can just turn that off and put that away. This tool over here is to essentially turn off your view and you can just have a clean view over here. So, you know, nothing is obstructing your view. And this button over here is to play back the footage that you've recorded. And this button up over here is for camera to cloud functions and features. So that's the all new Ninja phone. For more information, visit atomos.com. Thanks.